better way to host a show than on an active game night in a major league ballpark. My name's Darren Sutton. We are downtown Phoenix, Arizona. They call this part of the world Copper Square. This is Chase Field. This is the home of the Diamondbacks. Perfect game weekly presented by Rawlings. And you may wonder why we're here. You see, big press conference going on, the unveiling of Perfect Games All-American Classic and the move to the home of the Diamondbacks here at Chase Field on the show. We'll talk about how Perfect Game and the Diamondbacks work together and it translates onto the field. You'll hear from a very unique athlete with his PG stories. We're also gonna talk about the very first All-American named at this press conference, Hamilton High School local product, a PG All-American you'll get to know Rock Chalowski, and then Lillian Martineau, a beautiful left-handed swing, a young sophomore in high school in Connecticut, a female playing baseball. Her dreams, her journey has been incredible to this point. She'll join us on this show as well. But let's get things going. Well, we love to get it going on this show. Crank it up, plug it in, gas it up. It's time for a road trip. We're going all over the U.S. with this one. All right, and away we go, and let's start in Atlanta, where 2021 All-American and number one player in the class of 2022, Termar Johnson, finally made his college commitment, and he did it live on Perfect Game TV. Arizona State. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Sun Devils. Wow! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh! <laughs> Willie Bloomquist, you've done it. <laughs> Holy cow. Congrats to Jamar, congrats to big bro Travell, and congrats to ASU. Stunning. To Memphis, where 2017 PG All-American Nolan Gorman is mashing this season. The second baseman's 12 homers and 673 slugging percentage both lead the International League. His 1030 OPS is third. Are you listening, Cardinals? He's knock, knock, knocking on that door. Let him in. Hey, speaking of the cards, they got a front row seat last week as 2016 PG All-American MJ Melendez collected his first big league hit in his big league debut. And now everybody in the family can breathe. <laughs> Mom and dad were looking on. It was laced the opposite way. It's the first of many in Kansas City. Congratulations, MJ. Another 2016 PG All-American who made his big league debut last week was Royce Lewis, the number one overall pick in the 2017 draft out of Orange County, California's Jay Sarah finally arrived in Minnesota last weekend and the Twins, they were sure glad he did. It's a Jeter-esque base hit to the right side with family in attendance and what a debut. He was excellent in the field all weekend long. Royce is looking like he's fully recovered from that ACL tear that cost him his 2021 season. And last, but certainly not least, let's swing down to Clearwater, Florida for a check on 2020 PG All-American Andy Painter. The 13th pick in last year's draft is off to a scintillating start for the Phillies A-Ball affiliate. In 20 innings this spring, the big right-hander has not given up a run and has struck out 40 hitters. 40! I'm no mathematician, but I'm pretty sure that's two Ks per inning. Former PG All-Americans are making an impact at all levels of baseball this spring. Love going on a road trip. We packed well for that one. Some great stories, one of my favorite parts of this show. When we come back, I'll introduce you to Rock Chalowski, local product, Hamilton High School, one of the best middle infielders in the United States, and he is a PG All-American. That conversation is next. This is Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rollins. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings and thrilled to introduce PG All-American number one in 2022. He plays for the Canes national team. He also is at Hamilton High School where he plays for Mike Woods. Rock Chalowski, congratulations on this Thank honor. You. What did you know about this game coming into this year? I'd say fairly a lot. I mean, I grew up watching it with my friends and family and just having friends who played in the game before. I was pretty well experienced with it. And so it was something that you're going to say simply became on your radar that you wanted to accomplish. Expound upon that. I mean, I grew up just playing on the West Coast and not really doing much. So if I wanted to get exposure, felt like I had to get around more people and get my name out there. So, I mean, this was always a dream, and I'm happy I can put it on my resume now. So what did it mean when someone on behalf of Perfect Game, maybe CEO Brad Clement, reached out to you and your family to let you know, hey, the game's in Chase, that's your home ballpark, and you're going. What did that mean? Uh, it was crazy to me. I mean, just hearing that on the phone, just saying that, I mean, it's, it's in my backyard 20 minutes from my house, and then 
that I'm on the roster and that I've made it. It was it was a dream come true for me. I'm gonna do something. I might get in trouble with my shooter Steve over there and Tori, but come on in. You wanna know how you've made it? They wanna I'm gonna ask you questions. They will literally want your autograph. This is what happens when in fact you're selected as a PG All American. Tell me a little bit about baseball in Hamilton High School and Coach Mike Woods. It's definitely, I mean, some of the best baseball you can play in the country at the high school level. We got seven or eight coaches that work their butt off every day with us, just trying to make us better and teach us more about the game. Just not only just baseball, but life. I mean, they teach us a lot about just how to work. You're welcome. They teach you a lot about life. How about that? It's, it's they were man. lined up over there when you got done. There were people wanting to take selfies with you. That part's very, very cool about your journey. Who do you love to watch play? You're a talented infielder. You're probably athletic enough to play anywhere on the field, but what, what player at the higher level do you love to watch play? Brandon Crawford, for sure. Expound. I just think his defense is insane. I mean, that's something I, I love defense the most on baseball. And just seeing him, I mean, how many gold gloves has he won? I mean, it's, it's crazy just seeing the plays that he makes, and he makes them look so easy. Hey, he's so fluid, he's so strong. We've been able to do a lot of stuff with him, a perfect game alum as well. So we saw you at a PG event back in 2018, and I wrote down your measurables, 5'6", 110. You were playing for the Sandlot team back then. It was a Memorial Day event, I believe. So what part of your game has grown the most since you were that young and that little guy at a PG event? What part of your game has grown the most? Definitely the IQ. I learned a lot more about the game growing up and just playing better competition, just learning what I could do to get better and obviously just how the game's going to treat you. All right, let me step into the box with you and watch you hit, okay? What are some of the keys to your swing from your spikes to your helmet? If you're right, you know, tell me a little bit about your timing mechanism, your hands, your hips. If you're right, what are some of the keys to your swing, Rock? Definitely staying on my backside. I mean, I struggled with that growing up. I was kind of always out in front. I think my hands are pretty decent for where I'm at right now. So as long as my backside stays, stays where it's at, I can hit just about anybody. I can't wait to see you hit out here. Your dad, Dan, is a scout for the Cincinnati Reds. How much has that helped you understand the game better? A lot. I mean, we talk a lot just about the game and about what players we think stand out and some guys who we think that could change stuff about their game to make themselves better. And it, it's just taught me a lot about the game, having him in my life. And your mom, Tika, not only you talked about how much she's impacted your schoolwork, she sets the standards very high, but she's also a cancer survivor as well. Tell me a little bit about Tika. She's, she's awesome. Just kind of going through that last year when found out, or two years ago when she had cancer, it was, it was kind of a toll on our family, but she kicked butt through the whole thing and she's doing great now. I love her. Amazing. You're a PG All-American, man. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Incredible stuff. Rock Chalowski, PG All-American number one, about 49 to be named throughout the summer. When we come back, a wonderful conversation with a young woman, a sophomore in high school, who is impacting the game of baseball with her bat, with her glove and on social media as well. And I said baseball to be clear, Lily with the bat. That conversation is next. This is Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawlings. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. A young woman with a bat in her hands doing serious damage. And we're not talking about softball. Lillian Martineau out of Connecticut, her dream is baseball and continuing to play on her high school team, Lewis Mills High School in Connecticut with impact. And understand this, she's helping tell her story on social media. She's got followers like Nomar Garcia Parra and, and Sean Casey and Andy Stankowitz, Division One head coach at Grand Canyon University. Oh, Lily's got that beautiful swing and she's really carving some brand new roads for many that actually come behind her. Here's my conversation with Lily with the bat. Lily, thanks for spending time with us on our unique show. We really appreciate a few minutes. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. What is it that you love to this day about baseball? What did you love then? What do you love most now about our sport? I would just say the feeling that it gives me. You know, it gives me this, like, joy and excitement that um, I think it's hard to find in your life, you know, to find something that you look forward to every day and that motivates you to keep going, to work at. Um, so that's what baseball has done for me. It's really brought a great joy into my life. So help me understand and remember, if you will, and help all our viewers understand how it went down in middle school. You had already been playing baseball. You had teammates, male teammates, understood who you were. You always had athletes at your house. You were swinging in the cage all the time. Middle school, you hit a brief bump in the road in your baseball journey. You got through it. But what happened back then? 
So I was in seventh grade. So that was the first year that I could, you know, qualify to try out for the middle school team. And I went down to the nurse's office to get my blue card, which says that, you know, I've had whatever checkups I've needed to have with the doctor and I'm good to play. And then I went to get it. And then she was like, do you want me to write softball on the card? And I was like, no, like I've, I've tried off your baseball. I can put my name on the list. And she was like, you can't, like, you can't play. And so that shocked me because I, up until this point, I really had never been told I couldn't play baseball before. And so I went back to class because it was the middle of the school day. And I was so, so upset because again, I've never been told I could play before. So I got home, you know, I told my parents about it and they were like, you're not, gonna just switch to softball that like you can keep playing baseball if you want and so um long story short they just had a meeting with the school board and took a little bit of you know pull and tug I think but they eventually let me try out for the team and then I made it that that year and so I was able to play baseball that season I love it Chad and Katie are your strong parents that that encouraged you Mm -hmm. through that journey uh help me understand the role that they've played in all of this passion for baseball number one and then number two, the role they play just in guiding you into becoming a strong young woman, both parts. Yeah, I mean, so for baseball, like that day that I couldn't try out, they could have just said, oh, well, like just play softball. But, you know, they didn't. They fought for me to play baseball. And so that meant a lot. I was like, OK, like they will support me with whatever I want to do. And my mom especially always says to me, even if you go out there and you have a bad game, like I'm still going to love you. Like you can go out and just not worry about anything and just go play. And so that means a lot to me. And I think that transfers over into other aspects of my life. Like you were talking about where I can go out and try something. And even if I feel I can go back and like, I still have my family there and they'll support me. And then I can try again and fail again and, you know, so on and so forth. 10th grade. So you're 2024 Lewis M Mills high school, the Spartans, a member of the baseball team with your high school baseball team. Take it further. I know you play well around the bag. At first, you'll hop up on the mound. Um, Talk to me about your role on this year's baseball team. Yeah, so this year, I'm going to be the second pitcher in our starting rotation. And then when I'm not pitching, I'm over at first base. Uh, Occasionally, I'll hop in the outfield once in a while, but my focus is really uh, first base on the mound. Um, Also, I also focus a lot on hitting as well, trying to be a consistent hitter for my team, you know, get good base hits, scoring runs, nothing too crazy. So last fall, you jumped in and you made the women's baseball breakthrough series team. You got to go down to Texas. Gosh, I'd love to know what that experience was like. I can't even imagine how joyful you were. So it was something completely that I've never done before. I've never played on an all girls baseball team against all girls. I've never been to Texas to play baseball, you know, you're at this hotel, you're away from your parents the whole time, you're rooming with someone who you've probably never met before. It was a great experience, not just because of the great coaching that was available during the practice, but also like the games. Like I got to see what other competition there was, um, you know, what other females playing baseball are like, um, and what their goals are, things like that. What are they like? I mean, did you feel like you were uh, joyfully with your sisterhood, those that are in a similar path trying to do what you're doing? Did it, did it emblazon you? Did it empower you a bit? Definitely all of the above. Um, we all have shared similar experiences and some of the girls were older and some of them have, you know, either committed to play softball or are still trying to play college baseball. And so hearing their stories and how they were successful in their high school baseball careers and then hopefully in their college careers, is really great to hear that, you know, other people are trying to do the same thing that I'm doing. And so I think that's encouraging knowing like I'm not the only one. Hey, Lily, thanks for letting us get to know you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you play in person. This is an incredible story. You should be proud. There's a lot of young athletes and it's not a big burden. You just keep doing you. A lot of 10, 11, 12 year olds that are watching you very closely. You're inspiring them. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. I love the story about her parents, Chad and Katie, and how she's a massive Mets fan because it's not too far to get to City Field and Chad takes her all the time. The training, by the way, It's five to seven days a week in the weight room, but it's every single night with a bat in her hands. And the other great part of the story is being invited to be a part of MLB's Breakthrough Series to try out for the women's team and making it last fall and getting a chance to go to Texas. Oh, Lily with the bat. What an incredible story she is. 
We continue more from Chase Field and some stories from on the diamond. This diamond right here. This is Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawlings Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. And we were explaining that it translates at times onto this field. Perfect game, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and all the great teams around Major League Baseball. With that in mind, here's my conversation with the man who was a PG All-American back in 2017. He's now the number one prospect in the Diamondbacks organization. Here is Alec Thomas. And so I'm inside, and Alec Thomas is inside. And of course, Alec, thanks for spending time with us. It's not lost on us that we're here at Chase Field. The All-American Classic is moving to Chase Field and an All-American alum is now a major leaguer. How thrilling has the last week or so been for you? Uh, it's been pretty crazy, man. Just um, got all my family out here, uh, well, at least my mom's side and uh, my girlfriend's family, and it's it's been great. It's been really awesome. So. so let's talk about that base hit on May the 8th. And I know you're grinding now. You're in the lineup. You're playing center field. So, But I'm going to take you back to just that moment, if you could help me out. What's that moment like? I saw you do what you did as a big leaguer so many times. Expand your zone when you need to. Use the big part of the ballpark and you were rewarded. What was that first base hit? What did it feel like? Uh, it felt great. I think that was one of the better swings I had uh, this year. So big relief um, getting that first big league knock. And uh, it was great, man. Uh, pointed up to uh, my family and uh, it was a really special moment for sure. I, I can recall reading a lot about you last year. You went through just a couple of bumps in the road for two months, but man, you flipped the switch and finished like in a sprint. When you kind of made some changes, and organizationally, the D-backs were asking of you guys to see a few more pitches. Talk me through the low points last year and how you returned to the high points, because I'm guessing part of that's mental. Yeah, so I mean, they asked um, me to, or our organization, Double A Down, to uh, take a strike in our first at bat, and. Um, for me, that was uh, a little tough since I batted first almost every game. I just had to, you know, really lock it in and not be um, so worried um, about just taking that first pitch heater or even getting into a count where it's it's 2-0 and I, I'm still not allowed to swing in my first at bat. So um, just getting out of that headspace and um, being positive about um, what I'm doing and and um, I think in August or. Um, late July or something like that is when it started to click for me and I had a talk with our um, farm director about it and uh, we had a good talk and from from then on I started to really um, focus in and, and not uh, um, think about it too much. Those are great moments man you're 747 OPS in July you're 1100 almost in August to me those kind of forge who you are not only as a player but as a man right going through the bumps in the road because we all know life's not perfect I'm guessing you're way better because you went through that. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think it um, definitely helped me out um, a great deal with, with seeing like off speed more and um, having more uh, competitive at bats and not just swinging at you know first pitch heater in, in the uh, first at bat of the game. So I, I, I grew as a hitter and I think it definitely helped me today. So I'm definitely uh, thankful for that. But also, I mean, I feel like I probably could have hit better in, in uh, June and July, but I think uh, um, the bigger picture is down the road, so being able to um, have better at-bats. You're, you're on base percentage over the last two years, again, this year, last year, against, and I'm sure going deeper, but the last two years against lefties is really good. I mean, it shouldn't be that way. So what are some of your secrets to success, especially for our young players that might be watching? Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any secrets. I mean, just continue to work hard and uh, in the off season, really focus on uh, what you want to, want to do and and, and um, I think for me against the lefties was I'd set up the machine almost to where it's behind me um, so that I, I see that angle and, and get a good feel of my direction towards the ball and I think I worked on that a, a great deal so and my dad's a lefty too so um, him uh, throwing to me every day really helped and him mixing in some you know sliders curveballs knuckleballs whatever he's got so um, I think that definitely helped for sure. When you look back, Alec, at the 17 All-American Classic, we loved, uh, you know, getting to know who you were then. I remember our interview at National the Trainer's Room in an empty trainer's room. But as an All-American, um, what do you recall? Kelnick was, was on that team. Weathers, who's been to the big leagues. Tristan Cassis is almost at the big leagues. But what do you recall about the experience overall, Alec? Um, I think it was a great experience. Um, perfect game. I've been, I did all their stuff from... Uh, 
I don't even know how old, uh, probably like 12 or 13 years old. And um, they've always been a big part of getting me onto the scene. And I appreciate a lot they've done for me in that game um, in San Diego. was was really cool, really special. Um, had my family out there, and it was it was really cool. I really appreciate a perfect game and what they did. And, and so for me, as I see you reach this highest level, I can't help but look back at your time and, and obviously your father's ties to the White Sox as well, to that ace program, that Chicago White Sox ace program that for those of us that are passionate about the sport, it's near and dear to all of our hearts. The impact it's had on, on a lot of athletes that might not be able to play baseball, and now you're a big leaguer out of the ACE program. How proud are you of your journey through the ACE program? Yeah, I'm really proud to be a part of the ACE program. I mean, it's a great organization and uh, great coaching and, and great players. And uh, I think uh, sometimes we get overshadowed for being, you know, in the inner city or, or um, being from Chicago and being in the cold weather. But um, there's some great players, great coaches, and uh, I really appreciate the ACE program as well. Congratulations on arriving in the big leagues, and thanks for connecting with us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys. A big word of thank you to the Arizona Diamondbacks for making all of this possible and of course everyone in player development with Perfect Game. The PG All-American Classic, August 28th, right here at Chase Field. Thank you, Rock Chalowski and your family for joining us. Congrats on being All-American number one. We certainly want to thank the Arizona Diamondbacks player development system for what they have done in making a key player, one of their top guys available. Loved that conversation. And we finally wrap up our thank yous with Lillian Martineau. Can't wait to see what is next with Lily at the bat. And if you're into this show and you've seen it on your regional sports television, make sure you find us. We're an app. Grab your smart device and download Perfect Game TV devoted to amateur baseball and softball 24-7. On behalf of Perfect Game, and in this case, the Arizona Diamondbacks, my name's Darren Sutton. We'll see you next time on Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Raleigh.